come out with me. Bye, sorry. Hi, kids. For today's book, we are going to read another Flat Stanley chapter from Jeff Brown and Pictures by Scott Nash. If you have this book, grab it and let's start reading. Chapter 2, Being Flat from Flat Stanley Chapter Book by Jeff Brown and Pictures by Scott Nash. When Stanley got used to being flat, he enjoyed it. He could go in and out of rooms even when the door was closed just by lying down and sliding through the crack of the bottom. Mr. and Mrs. Lumchop said it was silly, but they were quite proud of him. Arthur got jealous and tried to slide under the door, but he just banged his head. Being flat could also be helpful, Stanley found. He was taking a walk with Mrs. Lumchop one afternoon when her favorite ring fell from her finger. The ring rolled across the sidewalk and down between the bars of the grating that covered a deep, dark shaft. Mrs. Lamchap began to cry. I have an idea, Stanley said. He took the laces out of his shoes and an extra pair out of his pocket and tied them all together to make one long lace. Then he tied one end of that to the back of his belt and gave the other end to his mother. Lower me, he said, and I will look for the ring. Thank you, Stanley, Mrs. Lambchop said. She lowered him between the bars and moved him carefully up and down and from side to side so that he could search the whole floor of the shaft. Two policemen came by and stared at Mrs. Lambchop as she stood holding the long lace that ran down through the grating. She pretended not to notice them. What's the matter, lady? The first policeman asked. Is your yo-yo stuck? I'm not playing with yo-yo, Mrs. Lambchop said sharply. My son is at the other end of this lace, if you must know. Get the net, Harry, said the second policeman. We have got a cuckoo. Just then, down in the shaft, Stanley cried out, Hooray! Mrs. Lambchop pulled him up and saw that he had the ring. Good for you, Stanley, she said. Then she turned angrily to the policeman. A cuckoo, indeed, she said. Shame! The policeman apologized. We didn't get it, lady, he said. We have been hasty. We see that now. People should think twice before making rude remarks, said Mrs. Lamchop, and then not to make them at all. The policeman realized that was a good rule and said they would try to remember it. One day, Stanley got a letter from his friend Thomas Anthony Jeffrey, whose family had moved recently to California. A school vacation was about to begin, and Stanley was invited to spend it with the Jeffreys. Oh boy, Stanley said, I would love to go. Mr. Lamchop sighed. A round trip train or airplane ticket to California is very expensive, he said. I will have to think of some cheaper way. When Mr. Lamchop came home from the office that evening, he brought with him an enormous brown paper envelope. Now then, Stanley, he said, try this for a size. The envelope fit Stanley very well. There was even room left over. Mrs. Lamchop discovered for an egg salad sandwich made with thin bread and a toothbrush case filled with milk. They had to put a great many stamps on the envelope to pay for both airmail and insurance but it was still much less expensive than a train or airplane ticket to California. The next day, Mr. and Mrs. Lamchop is lead Stanley into his envelope along with the egg salad sandwich and the toothbrush case full of milk and mailed him from the box on the corner. The envelope had to be folded to fit through the slot. 
But Stanley was a limber boy and inside the box, he straightened right up again. Mrs. Lamchop was nervous because Stanley had never been away from home alone before. She rapped on the box. Can you hear me, dear? She called. Are you all right? Stanley's voice came quite clearly. I'm fine. Can I eat my sandwich now? Wait an hour and try not to get overheated, dear, Mrs. Lamchop said. Then she and Mr. Lamchop cried out, Goodbye, goodbye, and went home. Stanley had a fine time in California. When the visit was over, the Jeffreys returned him in a beautiful white envelope they had made themselves. It had red and blue markings to show that it was an airmail, and Thomas Jeffrey had lettered it valuable and fragile and this end up on both sides. Back home, Stanley told his family that he had been handled so carefully he never felt a single bump. Mr. Lambchop said it proved that jet planes were wonderful and so was the postal service and that this was a great age in which to live. Stanley thought so too. The end, I hope that you guys like it and if you guys want more Stanley uh, chapter books, uh, tune in and thank you guys for watching and listening. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.